Welcome to Addicted to Running. This is Caitlin Block from ChefCaitlin.com. Um, Hi, Kate everyone. <laughs> Caitlin, what do you what do you do? Um, I blog about a my life, and I pretty much just ramble a lot. Um, healthy, delicious food that I eat. Um, actually, not always healthy food, and my obsession with CrossFit. Um, and events that I go on and just general ramblings about my life. Okay, and then uh, where can people find you online on all the different social media sites out there? Well, my blog's at chefcaitlin.com. Um, that's my main hub. Um, I'm also on Twitter at chefcaitlin, K-A-T-E-L-Y-N. Um, full disclosure, I'm not a chef, um, <laughs> but I am on Twitter at that. Um, same username on Pinterest. Um, YouTube is Chef Caitlin Blog, um, and Instagram is at Caitlin R Block. Awesome, uh, and yeah. she does post good Instagram stuff. Um, unlike some people, just food pictures <laughs> all day long. She actually posts other stuff besides food. Thank so, you. So I get. It's had a pounding at my door, but I'm not answering it. <laughs> um, and so Caitlin's really into CrossFit. I brought her on here just because I like talking to people who aren't always just addicted to running, um, but they are into cross training and different aspects of like what we do and what can help us running. So Caitlin, why CrossFit versus Insanity or P90X or any other con you know f conditioning training you've done prior? Um. Oh, jeez, man. Someone is really wanting to get in my house right now. Um, <laughs> the reason why I love CrossFit so much. It's different than everything I've done in the past. Um, in high school, grade school, I did sports. I did track, field hockey, crew. Um, I did long distance running. I've, I like to think I've done the whole nine yards. Um, and then when I was off, off seasons, I would do body pump, spinning, things like that. Um, and I never quite found something that really stuck. I always got kind of bored. Um, so when I found CrossFit, it was awesome because you get there and it feels like you're on a big adult playground. <laughs> yes, and the best part about it is the community aspect. I'm sure if you get P90X or Insanity, um, I'm sure you'll get a good workout doing any of those things. Sorry, I really have to go for okay. one second. <laughs> The main differentiation between CrossFit and any other high-intensity workout is A, the community aspect, which is huge, um, at least the way I see it. Um, <laughs> it's really great how I've only been at this new CrossFit box in Syracuse um, for maybe, I've gone twice, and I told them I would go back today, and I didn't come because um, one of my sisters flaked out on me, unfortunately. Um, but he was like, where were you today? You said you would work out. <laughs> and so, I mean, there's there's always someone who's going to keep you accountable. There's that community aspect. You become very close with people because you're all you're all doing the same crazy workout. Mm -hmm. uh, so then at the end, you know, you hang out together. You end up doing things outside of CrossFit together, going out for drinks, going out, having a barbecue. Um, so that's really the main differentiation is the community aspect. Okay, and then on that, uh, just because you mentioned it's crazy, what is the craziest exercise you've had as a part of a, a wad till the, you know? <laughs> um, I mean, there are so many things I could say. Some people hate burpees. Um, some people think burpees are crazy. Personally, I love burpees. I love thrusters. I love everything painful. Um, but the craziest thing I've done so far is a handstand push-up, and it really doesn't sound that crazy. But if you can't just do a straight up handstand push up on the wall, you can do it with three blocks and you're kneeling on the blocks over and doing push ups. Or you can go over to the pull up bar, put one band down and then another band through that, and you put that on your shoulders, go upside down inverted, and then put your feet on the top of the other band. It looks really weird and it's really hard to do. So I would call that. Probably one of the craziest things I've ever done. Yeah, I still, I, I haven't been able to do them alone because I, I just don't trust myself to just fall over. So I probably yeah. have the strength, but still it's like, oh my gosh, to just fall on your head, it doesn't feel good. No. And then yeah. also, the third thing I want to talk about with Caitlin is her diet. Um, she was a vegan at one point. Um, almost two years, yep. 
and then and I've only been for three months, so I'm not quite there yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then um, and then but now she's semi paleo or some along those yeah. lines. So with all the different diets and all the different things you've done, like why have you finally settled on paleo? And what have you noticed the difference between being a vegan and going switching to paleo now? Okay. Um. Well, I've done pretty much. I like to think almost every diet. Um, I've done, when I was younger, like in high school, I was young and naive, I did the fat-free, I did gluten-free for a long time, I've done sugar-free, um, I've done a combination of all three when I was vegan for a couple of years, um, about a year and a half of that I was completely gluten-free, um, so what I've kind of realized over time is that dairy kind of tastes gross to me. Mm -hmm. I never really had a taste for it when I was a baby either. I couldn't drink milk or anything. Um, so that I've never had a taste for it. It doesn't really make me feel that great. Um, occasional cream in my coffee or occasional, you know, full fat cheese um, tastes fine to me. Um, but I guess over the years it's taken a lot of time for me to balance being an athlete and also fueling myself well. Mm -hmm. um, when I was a vegan, I wasn't doing much in the way of high intensity exercise. Um, I would do some light cardio for like an hour and then that would be it. Okay. Um, but once I decided to train for a half marathon, um, I remember I was training and I felt fine. But then about a week before my half marathon, I felt so weak and I would go to bed at night and this was nearing the end of the two years. Mm -hmm. um, I would go to bed at night and I would feel full, but there was always something missing no matter what I ate, no matter how much hummus or nut butter or fruit I ate, there was something kind of like missing and I didn't know how to fix it. And my dad was like, well, why don't you have some fish? So I tried it and instead of being full and constantly thinking about food, it was, I was satisfied and it was like it turned off. Mm -hmm. so I was satisfied both nutritionally and mentally, and after that, I really didn't go back. Um, I was always eating fish, always eating. Um, well, actually, after that summer, I started transition into a more primal or ancestral way of eating. Um, a lot of high-fat dairy, um, full-fat meats, lots of oils, uh, and getting most of my carbohydrates from fruit. Um, so after that, I really didn't look back. Um, my first year at college, I did kind of try the vegan thing a little bit more again, um, but that really only lasted a month week again. So um, really, I've kind of figured out um, it does not work for me, and it really helps fuel to athletics. Can't talk sometimes. It really does help fuel my athletic performance a lot. So, yeah, it's always good to hear from a different side. Cause obviously, I'm been eating vegan, and again, I'm training for my 50k, and it's been working great. But again, I everyone asks where I get my protein. And again, I'm taking a protein powder, and I'm doing is you know another protein powder with my smoothies and. Want to lower down the protein powders, bro? Uh, no. <laughs> I love. I can't. Just my uh, personal opinion. I love my protein powders. Problem from lifting weights and being in lacrosse. I've always done whey or, you know, whatever. And I do was, love my protein powder, but it, was, it is good to cut down. It was nice to be able to just switch. Well, I do in the morning. I do just like a Vega. Uh, energy protein. Love like Vega, so, so yummy. So and then for the dinner, I do the plant, uh, plant fusion, and that's about twice as much grams of protein um, compared to the Vega smoothie. But it's interesting to see a different side and actually hear from someone because I felt no really besides maybe getting weaker because I just hasn't haven't lifted. But overall, I really haven't felt any different going to vegan and just being able to eat as much fruit. Like that's the that's my favorite part is I sit down and. Eat as much as you want because it's fruit and you're good. So we're someone else like yourself. Um, but that's going to be it for Caitlin. Um, again, you can find her at, at her blog, Chef Caitlin, correct? I'm not a chef, but yes. <laughs> she, does, she does post Everyone pictures of food. always ask that. Or they think that. They go, oh, it must be all about food or she's a chef. But I'm not, people. No. Make no. that very clear. No, she does like food, though. She definitely... You love food. Food is a great thing. Um, and then also, uh, you can check her out on Twitter at 
Chef Caitlin. Uh, Chef Caitlin, yep. Okay, uh, well, that's going to be it. Look forward to uh, more interviews here on Addicted to Running. Thanks, Caitlin, for coming on. Um, Thanks for having me. And I hope, look forward to seeing you guys next Tuesday.